So, I was working on the follow-up to the FNAF Focuses video, the FNAF Rumors video, that might have to become a two-parter, uh, but then I realised I was pretty much just writing the exact same video again, and it kind of just felt a tad too similar for my liking, which I really wasn't happy with. So, uh, yeah, that's delayed only by, like, two or three weeks while I rewrite that, and in the meantime, I'll be working on some other video stuff to spice things up a bit and give the channel the old one-two variety. Uh, but hey, in the meantime, I thought what better way to discuss such a meaningful franchise to me by shitting all over the terrible official merchandise it has. I kid, there's also some surprisingly decent stuff here too. I'll probably brush over most of this stuff as you bet your ass there's maybe even more Five Nights Freddy's merchandise than there are dumb theories, and hone in on the more like, you know, best and worst of it all. So yeah, that'll be fun. Keep in mind, this isn't a whole history of FNAF merch, so don't call me out for forgetting anything or whatever, uh, but if you're really itching for that video, well I mean... Maybe. Video game merchandise, you can't have one without the other. Since the dawn of the interactive digital medium, cashing in on the game's success by releasing a line of toys, action figures, stickers, apparel, backpacks, rucksacks, snapbacks, anthrax, pins, anything and everything with the relevant iconic imagery slash emblem slapped on the front of it for better or for worse? We're sold to the public. I'll admit it now, I'm kind of a sucker for this stuff. Now don't get me wrong, I like me a chunky stack of plastic physical game cases just as much as the next guy, but there's something about a high quality figure or plushie that highlights that IP is one that I'm particularly fond of or sticks out to me in some way. Or it's Sans Undertale, ha <laughs> funny! Five Nights at Freddy's was no exception, pretty light on merch for the first year or two, but come 2016, things really started to ramp up, with waves of those FNAF plushies suddenly popping up at major retailers, for example. We don't talk about those. Oh wait, we can! Funko, one of the biggest toy manufacturers in town and responsible for most of the Five Nights Freddy's merchandise you're probably aware of. The builds your own action figures, plushies, mystery minifigures, arcade vinyl figures, these things, and most infamously, the Funko Pop vinyl figures. Now, we can sit here all day and discuss the linguistics of how good or bad all of the FNAF Funko merch that the world has to offer is, but most of it's just kinda... Eh. Take the action figures for example, I mean they do the job, they have a few weird flaws like upper teeth, something Funko is consistently inconsistent about. But I mean yeah, for the most part they're fine, I remember when they were announced I went ahead and bought the whole first wave because at the time, oh boy, finally a tangible series of plastic figures based on the series that I've essentially centred my channel around for the past two years, yes please. In reality they really are just kids toys with removable parts, the idea being that you can mix and match the animatronics or whatever. I never really understood that. I mean, yeah, it's kind of a wacky gimmick that's funny for like a minute, but if I had to display these, I'd like to keep everybody as non-dismembered as they came packaged. Now, even if you don't care about all of the figures, one incentive to collect them all was the marketing decision to include one piece of spring trap with each figure to build the gross mofo himself. And I can safely say Funko absolutely shot themselves in the foot by releasing the Foxy figure with arguably the best part of spring trap. So you're either getting this or this for exactly the same price. Guess who's losing out here? Each wave did something similar, a nightmare Marion figure with the Nightmare character Wave, Enid with the Sister Location Boys, and Scrap Baby with the Pizzeria Simulator figures. Bit of a strange choice for Wave 2 to not have, like, you know, the final boss of Freddy's 4 as the collectible figure, in my opinion. Anyway, I'm not crazy or absolutely batshit insane, so I only have the Springtrap and Enid figure, and they look a tad janky, but as cheap collectible figures go, they're actually pretty decent looking, especially with Enid's colour scheme matching the silver joints. From a distance, these two just look like solid figures to display. I like these. Okay, I'm done being nice to Funko, here's why they suck. Funko is all about mediocrity and numbers. Like most major businesses who mass manufacture toys, it's business first, accurate naming convention second. So when I look at this, I think to myself, yep, that sure is a hearty chunk of brown plastic. I don't expect anything else or anything more. But then they start spewing out this and yep, now we have a problem. Ah, oh, dude, these are just not good. Funko and Five Nights Freddy's plush toys go together like Scott Cawthon and, and making the best game in his own franchise. They don't. The first wave of these splash toys were a disaster. Some of them are okay, some of them make me feel unwell. I'd argue that with the more complicated designs of the characters of the later games, the Funko plush has received more and more of a downgrade. From this to this to this. Now I've never bought a Funko plush myself, so I can't speak from experience, but come on. Look at this. Thankfully, they did seem to take a 180 and redeem themselves with some surprisingly quality pizzeria simulator merchandise. If I cared enough about that game, yeah, maybe I would have ended up grabbing one or two of these. All of them are fairly accurate to the original models while retaining that OG plushy feel. No printed fabric or insanely cheap looking material. In fact, it's strange how much better these guys look compared to the sister location ones. And it's safe to say, yep, the rest of Funko's FNAF stuff is fine, it works, not much to say. Moving on to something far more sinful. Toy Wiz and Competent Collect Clips go together like Funko and Five Nights Freddy's plush toys. I mentioned this briefly in my FNAF Hoaxes video, but here's the forehead gang and they're all uglier than the next. So what you will about taking artistic liberty, but these guys just look way too goofy to me to take the slightest bit seriously. 
Like, holy shit. Half of these guys look like aliens. It's weird, man. Not to mention, some of the design choices here are literally based on errors. Uh, take, for example, the weird black marks on Freddy and Bonnie's arms. That's a clipping error from the first trailer. I'll admit it now, the Foxy and maybe the puppet figure designs look okay, but as a whole, these are just some of the strangest looking interpretations. They're not god-awful terrible, but they're far from competent. But hey, if you're worried things don't get worse, well hey, they do. How about these things that blatantly rip off fan model designs? Or this dude, he looks like he's about to fall apart in the promo image. Yeah, this is a... Uh... A tad depressing. Yeah, FNAF merch has had a considerably controversial history of taking influence from or straight up copying fan designs. Especially during the early days, there was no quality control in the slightest. Even Funko is guilty of this. But BioWorld seems to be the biggest offender in this department. If they're not stealing source filmmaker fan designs, they're coming up with their own and oh god, go back to plagiarism please. There's not much to say about the stuff that these guys put out other than, yikes. I mean, these designs just aren't that appealing to me at all. And I feel like I'm not alone in that sentiment. Every conceivable form of merch was spat out by this company and that confirms it, nothing is sacred. Except for one thing, bad figures. Yeah, Funko's got that covered. Funko Pops are some of the most controversial collectibles in existence. Ergo, a lot of people kind of hate them. Quick rundown, they're roughly four inches of looking like a Powerpuff Girls reject, an inflated head with a smaller body, and a pair of dead black eyes. That is not funny. As someone who's definitely dabbled into the world of pop figures, it really is completely case by case basis on whether a character actually looks good as a pop and works well with the template. But that's a whole other subject for another day, honestly. As for the Five Nights at Freddy's Funko Pop figures, they're really hit or miss. Here are some of the worst ones in my opinion, though I really can't say I'm the biggest fan of most of them. The classic figures look too plain to me, the nightmare designs just do not work well at all with the cartoony look of the pop figures, for example. Despite that though, weirdly enough, I do think Springtrap looks kind of okay. He seems to translate better to cartoon design for some reason. However, regardless of all this, I do think that the Freddy's pop figures as a whole actually work better as a result of the weird and uncanny pop figure template. Take a look at Mega Man for example, what the bitch. I mean, I like Mega Man, I only got this pop because I've been having a blast playing through the first four NES games recently, but the cold dead eyes uh, kind of suck the life out of him. In fact, look at any human pop figure, they're all pretty much terrible for that exact reason. But the Five Nights at Freddy's animatronics are designed to be inherently creepy. It's one of their core intended design elements. And as a result of that, surprisingly enough, I hold a fair few of these FNAF pops in high regard. My favourite has to be the toy Freddy figure. It's basically a chibi version of him when he's in the office. I love him. Also, the withered bunny figure, he's just a dope-ass chunk of plastic, yo. The fact that there was never one full wave of FNAF 2 animatronic pop figures incentivized me to pull together all the one-off releases for a FNAF 2 pop figure collection of sorts. And while, yeah, Bloom Boy and the Puppet are both kinda stinkers, it's cool to have a smaller solids collection here. I also went ahead and collected all two of the Freddy's 3 figures, why not? So, things as a whole seem pretty shaky in the merch department. I think we can all admit that. However, what if there was a beacon of hope through all of this? One company that managed to release some of the highest quality FNAF merch to date. Yeah, Sanchi. In my honest opinion, these guys put out the best of it all when it comes to this franchise's merchandise. One of my favourite things about any piece of video game merch is the feeling of being sold something that's been taken straight from the game's universe, like owning a piece of the IP. That's where these guys come in. Game tokens, security badge, the Freddy's One Office poster, game accurate plushies. This is the sort of thing I love seeing. And you bet your ass it's all high quality stuff for the price you're paying. Even the latex chica mask actually looks okay. It is so easy to mess that sort of thing up so easy. I gotta commend Sanshi for just how cool this stuff is, the plushies especially. Over the course of their availability, I went ahead and copped each one of the plushies, save for one, the Golden Freddy plush. This was mainly due to the fact that I already had the limited Fredbear variant, and technically the Golden Freddy plush really is the only one that isn't canon to any of the games, so I'm not fussed over not owning him. And uh, yeah, that's the thing. Sanchi doesn't have the FNAF license anymore. And dude, legitimately, that totally sucks. There's definitely a few things I never picked up from these guys that I would have loved to have owned. But for whatever reason, everything that's left on the site is sold out indefinitely. It's kind of a bummer. Alright, with all that being said and done, I have some demands. FNAF merch as it stands now seems to truly be a mixed bag. You got the garbage, the Bioworld and good stuff throughout, and the top tier faithful merch that the legends over at Sanchi have released. But honestly, what I think would do the series justice and appease the older FNAF audience are some super high quality statues and figures. I mentioned before that the Springtrap and Enid's figures are decent, but what if, say for example, the franchise was put into the hands of first for figures? Yeah, without trying to sound like I'm selling you anything, these guys are well known across the board 
for putting out some of the best resin and PVC statues out there. Seriously, look at anything on their website if you want any good examples. It's all just incredibly well-made stuff. They're especially good with taking cartoony looking characters and translating them into physical statues, which is why I think taking the FNAF characters and doing just that with them is a brilliant idea. I mean, Scott's signature style with these games already borders on them being right between cartoony and realistic, so this would be a perfect fit. Honestly, I would love to see Ennard or Springtrap as fully realized PVC statues. They're two of the most iconic villains in the franchise and honestly have some potential for interactivity too. Like imagine being able to remove Ennard's mask or lifting up Springtrap's mask to reveal William Afton's corpse head inside. I genuinely think that would be awesome. Or hey, if you want to get real fancy with it, I imagine there'd be so much potential with the classic Freddy Fazbear replica. Give him a proper fur coat, a proper metal endoskeleton, or maybe even include some sort of feature to mimic the way he acts right before he gets you when you're out of power in the first game. Making his eyes glow and flicker, and hearing him play the music box rendition of the Toriador March would be the absolute coolest. For reference, take something like the Metal Sonic figure that First for Figures put out, it'd work amazingly. Or just, I don't know, with a bunny. I really want a with a bunny statue with glowing eyes, why not? And the best part about any of these figures would be the possibility for posability. One of the reasons I just don't own any posable figures is because I just can't get over the seams, and in my book, unless you're super adamant about changing a figure's pose constantly, it's not worth it for me. But these guys are literally animatronic mascots, they are canonically posable figures in a sense, so visible seams or connectors wouldn't be an issue in the slightest. If anything, it'd add to the authenticity. So Scott, if you're watching this, please give First for Figures the right to make FNAF statues, please renew Sanchi's license to produce FNAF merch, and you know, while you're here, Check out the fan game reviews, why not? So in closing, there's a lot to be said about the crappy FNAF merch, whether it's Scott's lack of quality assurance, or simply the incompetence of some of the companies with the FNAF license being the reason we've ended up with so much of it, but the merch that does stick out sticks out good, and for all the right reasons. Maybe I'll revisit this topic with more to say if it ever comes to that, or if I manage to miss any of the truly terrible stuff. I know I talked about Funker quite a bit more than anyone else, but you've got to understand, these guys account for the absolute majority of Freddy's merch. Like I said though, if there's any more really bad official FNAF merch that I just missed, uh, do let me know. I had a lot of fun talking about all this and I would not hesitate to rip on even more of it. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know, Funko seems to be going downhill now, right? I mean, all they're doing now is rehashing old figures and plushies with the new line of blacklights. Ah, oh, son of a bitch.